I want to share a story with you that I think is very, very interesting. Top drawer stuff um, because it has a Cork connection. And I was reading about it at the weekend. It is the story of Patricia Mary Jones, originally from Cork. Um, She um, had a husband. She had seven children. And after 15 years of married life, In the UK, in Sussex, uh, she vanished. Uh, She walked out the door and apart from a couple of sightings over the years, nothing was ever heard of her since. And her her own daughter, in the sense that Patricia Mary Jones' daughter passed away, but her granddaughter continues the search. And her granddaughter is Pip O'Neill, the granddaughter of Patricia Mary Jones. And she joins me by phone. Lovely to talk to you, Pip. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. It's an incredible story, of course, and well done for not giving up the search. But what's very interesting to us is the Cork connection. Can you just talk us through uh, your grandma and what what you believe may have happened or or what happened back when she literally walked out the door? Yeah, of course. So um, both of my, so both the um, O'Neills and Joneses are from uh, from Cove. Patsy was actually born in um, Blarney Street in Cork City, uh, but they lived in Cove. They were married in Cove in 1945. Uh, they had a couple of children there. All of the families were there still. And then they moved over to London in the kind of mid-1950s. Um, they were there for a couple of years. I think Patricia really enjoyed that. Um, she had siblings there. You know, she liked the lights and the the, uh, the parties and uh, all of the, the fun things that you could do as a kind of young woman in the city in that time. Um, and then um, my aunt um, had a bad chest from the smog in London. Um, and so my granddad got a job out in Sussex so that they could be in the fresher air and, you know, be by the countryside. It was actually when Gatwick Airport was being developed as well. Yeah. Um, and they were there for about a year. Um, and I think she was just miserable. Um she was so far away. I mean, it was only, it's only actually 30 miles from London, but, you know, as a young mother of seven, she wouldn't really have had any way of getting back to London. She was far away from her parents who were still in Cove, um, far away from her siblings still in Cove. And I think she just, you know, she woke up one day and she just decided she didn't want this life anymore. Why am I reading that she may have had postnatal or postpartum depression? Had she had recently had a child? Yes, yes. So, so of the seven children, the youngest child was only eight months old when right. she left. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, my cousins and I think now, in hindsight, that it's very likely that she probably had postpartum depression. Um, she'd had a lot of children in a in a very few years. You know, it was kind of like a kid a kid every year for fifteen almost. Um, and before your man passed away, clearly you had conversations with your mother about her mother. What, what yes. did she think? I mean, uh, you know, were there stories handed down that Patricia's mood had changed or that she seemed depressed or lethargic or upset about anything? Yeah, I think um, from my mom's perspective, she was obviously heartbroken when she couldn't find her. And then when she, she found her through the Salvation Army, but Patricia didn't want to be didn't want to be found. And I, I think there's probably a lot of shame surrounding that. You know, if you make a decision to leave your family, that's then something that you have to deal with, whether that's actively dealing with that or, you know, passively um, pushing that, putting that in a box and not dealing with it again. But from, from my mom's perspective, she she just heard that she was a young woman and that, you know, she, she had this life that she wasn't sure how she felt about. Um, and she'd kind of, she was in a situation where it was stay and stick it out for the hard run with a lot of children yeah. in the town that you don't know yeah. or it was it was leave. I don't think she felt any anger towards her. I think it was mostly just sadness. I mean, my mum was only three when Patricia left, so she felt that absence of a mother greatly. But it, I guess your mother then would have been something like in her 30s maybe or, or 40s when she found her mum or thought yeah. she found her. Talk to us about that in the 90s, the early 90s. Yeah, so, um, so I've got an older sister and I was actually born in the early 90s and I think it's likely that that's what, um, that's what pushed my mum to, to have another look and, have, and find her. Um, it's weird because all of Patricia's family, all of the Joneses, we're still in really good contact with them. It's not like that cut off. We, they've stayed in my, my entire life and my mum's life. They, were, they really helped my granddad like, look after the kids after Patricia had left, which, um, which is strange, I guess, because you'd expect if she'd left that maybe we'd have had no contact with her family. But yeah. um, I think because she was of a similar age to, to how old Patricia would have been when she left. When she, she left. probably felt, yeah, a very strong connection to her at that time and, so and hope that maybe got, enough time had passed. So she got in touch in the early 90s with the Salvation Army. Was that yes. in London? Yeah, it was in London, yeah. So my mum was of the opinion that because Patricia had been seen in Brixton, it was likely that she'd stayed in London. 
And was I she sighted in Brixton know. with with a couple of kids by the hand? Yes, she was, yeah, in 1963 or 1964, which is where we thought maybe she'd had another family. It's kind of why I put the, the appeal out. I thought maybe someone would think, oh, that sounds like my grandma, and we might find out. Yeah, yeah. So when your mum got on to the Salvation Army, I read at the weekend that your grandmother, Patsy, didn't want to be found. Explain that. Yeah, so she basically said the Salvation Army have an obligation where if someone doesn't want to have their details passed on to the person who's inquired, they just don't have to. So it just comes back with like a generic letter, like, sorry, we found this person and they're alive and safe, but they didn't basically want to be contacted. So it's quite a generic. It wasn't like a personal response or anything. It's just like their standard protocol. And how did your mum feel about that? Oh, heartbroken. She was absolutely heartbroken. She was just really hoping that that was going to be the time for them to find out what happened and even if there was no relationship to be had there in the subsequent years perhaps they could have done some you know had some closure and done some healing it's a real mystery isn't it i mean were there times over the years that family members traipsed around london looking for her there was loads of times like because she had siblings in london and, and we have cousins up there there were loads of times where people would almost like touch on the subject or be like oh you know like Patricia left and we'd be like yeah we don't know what happened do you know what happened and like you know there was never any answers if there was if any of her siblings did know that they took it to their grace with them unfortunately I mean it's not something that was ever discussed with with my mum and her siblings and the connections back here in Cork then whether it was yeah. say Blarney Street or Cove who what what family names were they were they were they Jones no they wouldn't have been Jones yeah yes yeah, so, yeah so her maiden name was Jones and Jones. her married name was O'Neill Okay, so did she ever contact family back in Cork? As far as I'm aware, no. Um, as far as so her parents, her, my great-grandparents hired a private investigator to try and find her in London and they had no success. Um, actually, some of the children, some of Patricia's children actually were sent back to Cove after she left because my granddad suddenly had to work out how to hold down a full-time job and look after seven children. So he couldn't so. look after the seven, so they were sent back to be reared by family in Cove. Yeah, for about six months to a year, and then and then they were all reunited, and he'd kind of worked out a system of how it was going to work. So she didn't reach out to her own family because she was uh, a Cork. She was a young Cork girl. She was born in Cork. She was reared in Cork. Cork was yeah. her home. She never got in touch with them either. Um, and no. then, of course, your mom died um, in two thousand and fifteen. Sorry to yeah. hear that. Never having learned what happened to her mother. No. Well, knowing that she had walked out, knowing that she had been contacted but didn't want to get in touch, that must have been heartbreaking for her. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was incredibly difficult. It's actually now, I was. the reason I put the appeal out is because I thought enough time's passed that Patricia's probably passed as well. She'd be 97 if she hasn't. Um, that I can now look into it for, for my mum's sake without hurting anyone, you know, without there being that active hurt. Yeah, I mean, you don't know for sure whether or not Cork-born Patricia Mary Jones has actually passed away unless no. you were to check the obituaries of every day of every week of every year yeah no I don't I don't know that but um, I mean as a, from a family standpoint um, I don't know if uh, uh, the, the rest of them haven't lived particularly long lives so I'd be surprised if she is alive it was it was a hard time so the photographs then that I saw online and some of the newspaper p- papers picked up on um a stunningly beautiful young woman uh, who who loved her style, loved her fashion, and and some lovely photographs of her out socialising with friends. The kind of things that we all have at home that our parents, you know, a lot of Irish people went to London and socialised and got jobs. Those kind of photographs. But a particularly beautiful one around a kitchen, uh, like a front room table in, in a small little house. What's that photograph? That photograph is um, the house where um, Patricia was born in Blarney Street in Cork City. Um, but it's actually not her in the picture, it's her parents yes. um, and, um, and some of her siblings. But um, it's a picture that I was sent recently by one of my cousins and I just love it. I just think it's so, like, beautiful. Yeah, so these are your um, grand great-grandparents yeah. sitting around having a meal in the family home in Blarney Street, the Jones family home in Blarney Street. Yeah, yeah. And do you think that there could be some help in Cork to help you piece together whether, you know, what happened or the story of your your grandmother's life? Yeah, I think it's very possible. I think so. uh, Some people have suggested that um, she might have had trouble, you know, if she had remarried, obviously they were Catholic, she might have had trouble with that so that she might have had to go back to Ireland. So it's possible that she went home or somewhere around Cork. Yeah. The theory is that she remarried 
couldn't go home without revealing that she hadn't divorced her first husband. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think because they were Catholic, I think she left. And then for her, she would have been in a bit of a situation. I mean, I've, Catholicism was obviously um, a big deal. At, well, obviously it still is, but it was a bigger deal. Um, I don't know how much it would have affected her having a relationship with an English man, for example. But I think anyone else would have known that she that she was still married and, and that her husband was alive and well just, you know, a short 30 months. I know how people would react to that. But have you gone through births, marriages, deaths and, and checked with the official sources in that regard? I have, I yeah. have, yeah. I've looked through all of those, but unfortunately, because Patricia Mary Jones or Patricia Mary O'Neill is such a, like, common Catholic name, I'm hoping now that I might be able to find her national insurance number or her social security number and I might be able to find some more information that way. There could be a chance that she ended up coming back to Cork. Yes, yeah. Um, but you don't know whether she did or not or stayed in London because some family members... Wasn't there a member of the family who, who thought they saw her in a Brixton market in the 60s with two small children, possibly twins? Yes, yeah, that was her brother. He saw her in Brixton market in about 1963, but he wasn't close enough to talk to her. But his assumption was that the children were hers. You know, he, from her body language, he thought that the children were hers. Did he her. try to get to her, but she was too far away? Yeah, he was he was travelling past and like he oh. stopped and tried to get back to her and by the time he got there she was gone. And then there was another cousin on the O'Neill side who had a similar circumstance, saw her kind of at a distance, thought, hang on a second, that's Patricia. But then by the time they got to her, she, she Oh gone. my God, so near and yet so far. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, we we will be sharing the photographs and the story like many others are. I'm quite sure the same thing is happening in the UK, is it? Sharing our photographs? Sharing the story? It's kind of blown up a bit. It's really wonderful. Well, hopefully it will come to fruition and you'll be getting some unanswered questions answered. Yes, I really hope so. Yeah. And if there's anybody in Cork that this might ring any kind of bell with, you would never know. Um, How can they get in touch with you? Uh, so my t- they can get in touch with me through Twitter or my emails on my Twitter as well. So they drop me an email. Okay. Let me give out that information. And indeed, if they can't follow any of that, they can get in touch with me and I can put them in touch with you. Okay, brilliant. It's lovely to talk. Perhaps we might have an opportunity to talk in the future, Pip. Yeah, that would be really lovely. I'll definitely keep everyone updated with anything I find. Thank you so much. You're very kind. Have a good day and thanks for sharing Thank the story you. of your Thank grandmother, you Patricia Mary Jones, who in 1960 left a husband and seven children after 15 years of marriage and may have been seen a couple of times by relatives so close but yet so far but many unanswered questions. And of course, there is a Cork connection. She was born on Blarney Street, moved from there with the family when she was young to Cove and then in later years uh, to the UK where she raised her own family. It's an extraordinary story, I believe, and I hope you feel the same. If you have any information, incidentally, at Pip underscore O'Neill on Twitter. Um, that would be at Pip underscore O'Neill on Twitter. Or get in touch with me. Text 0868104106. Neil Prendeville, the voice of Cork. Weekdays 9 to 12. Cork's Red FM.